Hi everyone, this is Erin from Sandpaper Road and this is Tackle Your Stack. Remember that there's nothing for you to buy. We're just going to follow a series of templates that you draw and I'm gonna start by putting the next set right on the screen. This is the tutorial for templates I, J, K, and L. And so even though they're coming up on the screen, and I know that it might be a little hard to see, you can go to sandpaperroad.com and just click on Tackle Your Stack, and then you can get close-up uh, template guides so that you can draw your own. What you'll need to do to draw your own, if this is the first time you're seeing a Tackle Your Stack um, video tutorial, what you'll do is you'll find from your stash just a plain piece of white, 12 by 12 paper a lot of times you can get them you know on the back of something that maybe you don't want anymore a pattern paper maybe you're taking it out of a 12 by 12 album and what you do is you follow the template guide and hand draw with a ruler and a pen or a marker um, your own personal copy of each template so these are my copies that I hand drew. So I've got I, I've got them a little bit out of order, I see, uh, J, K, and L. And these, oh, you're also gonna need one piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock as well, um, or two uh, pre-cut card bases that are size A2. And this I just have as a guide, but I've already gone ahead and cut my two A2 uh, cards. Is it two cards that we're going to have today? Is it? Yes, it is two cards we're going to have today. Okay, with this set. Now, the unique thing about I, J, K, and L that we haven't done yet in the other templates is in these templates, uh, let me show you on J and L, you've got um, this look here, and I know you'll see it close up, but this is we're actually gonna use as an envelope for an A2 size card. Now, if you're doing this you know, on your own, not following the, uh, the video, and you just wanna do this with other paper later on, certainly you could just use it as a square, an eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter square. But I have it um, measured so that if you wanted to use it as a template for an A2 size card, you could. And um, especially cool because we're making two cards today, so you'll end up with two envelopes. The 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 developing of the, the developing, the as you creating your own template following the guide, this part is gonna be probably the trickiest if I'm being honest, but once you get it done, it's done forever. So um, definitely make sure that you have the measurements when you're hand drawing your template. You'll notice that as you're following the guide, there's an arrow that I drew or that I have on the, the, um, the template guide. And that means that you measure from this end. If you see it this way, that means that it's Measuring from this end, it's three and a three eighths. Then measuring from this end, it's four and one eighth. Okay, turning it this way, if it's this way, obviously you could see if you're measuring it from this end. Okay, it's three and three eighths, and then four and one eighths is by this end. Same here, measuring it by this way. That's the trickiest part. Um, and then once you get those two measurements, I just drew this little notch right there just to connect the dots basically, but that's that's just sort of an eyeball. It's the two markings that you need there to make the envelope work. If you have an envelope punch board, wherever mine is, it's usually on my desk, but I don't have it nearby, um, then you can just use the square and insert it into your punch board for an A2 size card and it'll work just fine. But I kind of made these measurements in mind in case you didn't have the punch board and you still wanted to do the envelope. So let's get started right away. Oh my goodness. Let me show you what we're gonna make. I made this already with some 4th of July paper uh, from Echo Park. And these are uh, the cards that I made. Look how cute. 
So you've got a pretty simple design. Also, we're gonna utilize lots of cut aparts um, and things that come with whatever collection you're using, okay? Um, I'm doing one as a horizontal card and one as a vertical card this way. Um, real nice. Then the two envelopes, okay? That come because you're using the pattern paper. Now, is that not the cutest thing ever that you have the envelope to match? See how that is? And then you could just put like a label on the front or something, right? It's so cute. Okay, so I have two envelopes, two cards. Then you've got, um, this is the uh, one of the layouts with room for, I made it for a four by four photo. Um, and I put two cut aparts here. Of course, I bet you can imagine that if you, that you'd have room for up to three photos here or even more because there's space. This is the next layout. I love this idea with the three tags, um, smaller photos, more like, um, I don't know, they're not really wallets. Well, I guess they are sort of wallet photos, okay? And then two larger ones and a place for journaling, or you could add a third photo here um, to make more. And then finally, uh, the last layout that we'll do uh, is just a pretty simple layout with room for a photo, and I've got a journaling spot there. Okay, and now you could have these as, because it's coordinating paper, you could, in your album, when you're putting your album together, you could put any two together if you need to have like two next to each other. See what I mean? It really wouldn't matter. It's whatever your layout is or your scrapbook album is doing. So I did that with the 4th of July paper. And then I did the same uh, pattern that we're gonna do today with, this is some, um, Lavender Hills paper from Craft O'Clock. Are these not the cute? Look, look at the cards. Now this one, I did the same thing. Let me show you. Okay. How did I do this here with the band across? Let me get that other card. Oh, I see. Yep, instead of using this here, I used uh, different things here. Yep. You have a lot of creativity and a lot of freedom that you can do. These are the same pattern, if you can believe it. So, but look how different it looks. Little pearl embellishments, cut aparts, ribbon, the coordinating envelopes. So cute. And then we've got this one. Let's see which one I used here for this. Looks like with the four by four photo. I can tell by this going all the way across that this is the one I used. Mm hmm. With the four by four, don't they look unique? You almost wouldn't, I mean, for a split second, I almost was like, dang, did I use the same pattern or didn't I? But yes, I did. And here's the one with the, um, you know why it looks different? Because I used pattern paper instead of cardstock. See how this one I used um, just like white cardstock for the base, and this one I used brown cardstock for the base, and this one red. Where this, I used a pattern paper and it totally, as the background, and it totally changed the look of the, uh, of the layout. Here is this one. Yeah, I just changed it up a little bit. Instead of using cut aparts like this, I made room for photos here. Wow, looks pretty good. And then finally, the one with the three tags. Mm -hmm. And this one I didn't uh, put, I didn't have as much room for photos. I just added more embellishments and stuff. Isn't that cute? So nice. And of course, these are all things you can add, you know, based on what you have already at home. So to get started, um, what we're gonna be doing is, uh, you definitely have to take care of your templates, you know, trace those and get those situated. Um, it's gonna be really hard to do without doing that step first. Oops, let's start with letter I, shall we? And uh, then you'll need to pick four pieces of paper, uh, the pattern paper, one that you're gonna use for each one, I, J, K, and L, okay? 
So I'm going to, I'm in the process of making a big Christmas album with Tackle Your Stack. So I'm going to continue that. Um, of course, you can do whatever paper you have on hand. Um, highly recommending the double-sided paper just to give you a little bit more variety. And also highly recommending, I'm highly recommending that it's all within one collection, like one manufacturer. Um, when you do a set of four patterns, it's just going to make your life a little easier. So uh, I have Christmas paper here that I've pre-chosen for my four papers. Um, and this is, uh, I'll put links below if you're interested in this paper. It's by Craft O'Clock. It's called This Miracle Night. And oh my goodness, I just love it. I couldn't wait to work with it. So let's get started. Okay, we're going to start with template I. I've chosen my paper. Now, um, here's what I'm going to be mindful of. The, this piece is going to be used on a layout. I look at my little notes that's on my template, a layout, the card, A2 panel, or A2 card, inside panel, or tag. Now, I thought to myself, because I have this paper, I thought, well, what am I going to want across a layout or on a layout in a big piece? Probably either a chunk of this or like a chunk of this, okay? Um, but this Santa... I thought, wouldn't that be cool on a tag, especially because I'm mindful that the layouts we're going to end up with have those tags, but they also have card panels. So I thought, well, instead of just laying it down any old type of way or putting it this way because this is how it's drawn, turn it so that if there's something you want to be on a tag, make that piece on the tag, you see? So I want that Santa to be... I want to have the choice to either put it on a in, uh, card panel or a tag. So I'm going to cut my paper this way. Remember, it's a square, so you can turn your paper any way you want when you're cutting the template. I know it seems obvious, but I think sometimes we forget. We can turn our paper before we cut it um, to really make the most of our, our supplies. So I'm going to save this guy because I don't know when I'm going to need him coming up. Um, and now... I will seven by 12. So I'm gonna do a seven inch. Let's see, where's my seven? Right here. Okay. And I'm gonna cut carefully, you know, some trimmers. Some trimmers uh, are funny. All right, there we go, good. And now what do I have here? I've got a five inch all right, so this is all going to be five inch if it's right. So now I'm going to turn it and do three and three quarters. Three. There's the half. And there's the three quarters. Okay, three and three quarters. And I'll lay it right there. I'll do another one, three and three quarters. One, two, right there's three quarters. And I'll lay it right there. Now, this one down here, I've got, it's the one inch, two inch, two inch. It's two inches this way, so I'm just going to cut two inches that way. We'll deal with the little pieces in a second. Okay. And now this one should fit right here. Good. And now I can go back and do one inch up here. Okay, and get it just right, so one inch there, and then two inches there, okay? Easy peasy, very easy peasy, okay. Now, what you can do is you can leave it like that, or you can start to assemble as, as you go. Um, I've done it both ways. Maybe what I'll do is... Uh, Maybe I'll just, uh, let's see what we can do here. Two by two by two, layout. Let's just cut this time. Let's just cut everything this time. So I'm gonna put that to the side and reach for my next one, okay? And try to keep these pieces together. You know, if you have, just while I'm on the subject here, if you have these things that your paper comes in, 
you know, it's cool to use them with your templates while you're mid project, you know, to put them all in there. Like if, if you have enough, you could do one for each letter. You know, this one's my I one. Okay. And now let's go to the next one. All right. This is my K. Now let's see. Matt for a photo. Keep print cut title. Yep. I did that already. See, I really wanted this Christmas. I have keep print or cut title. Wouldn't this be cool to just have it be right there as it is? So if I can turn it this way, then I'll cut it and it should just pattern itself. All right. So let me cut this strip off. Okay. And, oh yeah, we'll save that for, for later. Now I'm gonna make sure it goes like this. Keep print, cut title. Okay, good. Now cut first, what do we have here? We have a six and a half, a six and a half. Okay. So let me do the six and a half. Alrighty, six and a half. Make sure he's lined up right. All right. Six and a half. Okay, good. Right there like that. And now five and a half. Five, five and a half. Is there anything that says cut second? Yes, this. Okay, five and a half by five and a half. All right, cut second. Five and a half by five and a half. Where is my five and a half? Oh, right there. Five and a half. Okay. Five and a half. Okay, is that how it was? Yes. Now, is there anything that says cut third? Yes, this. All right, so this is how it is, right? Now, it says to cut this one third. Whoops. One by six and a half. Oh, just cut the one inch off the end, huh? Okay, I will just cut one inch off the end. I will turn it upside down and cut one inch off the end, like so. Okay, good. Look at that teeny tiny little piece. I'm gonna save that guy for very last if I can help it. Now what's most logical for me to cut next? Well, I, I only have one line to cut, so two inches right here. All right, let me get this guy out of the way. Put this down here. And now I've got this, oh, it went this way. Yeah, I could tell by the pattern in the paper. Okay. So two inches here then, and another two. Oh, that won't be too hard because it's just two, and then two, and then whatever piece is left over. Okay, easy. Kind of, I kind of cut it crooked. That's okay. All right, moving right along. That's as easy. I this is so easy. Okay. And what's next? If you're, um, if you skipped ahead and missed, and are wondering where we get these templates, or can I zoom in or whatever? Remember, you go to sandpaperrow.com, and you click on tackle your stack. And I will put a link right up in the corner. And if you tap on your screen, it will take you right to that place. The template guides are free. This is not about buying anything. I just have a passion for people. We have we collect so much stuff. For heaven's sake, let's just make some stuff. All right, what are we gonna do here? We are gonna, this is the one that has the envelope. Panel for an A2 card or tag. Oh yeah, because I wanted to put this on a, on a tag, that skate. I'm in love with that skate. Oh yeah, yeah, cool. So let's cut the little strip off. Okay. This one I feel like we're gonna have to be a little bit more careful for some reason and I think it's because of the envelopes. But like I said, um, boy, that's a nice little pattern, isn't it? 
I love this paper. All right, cut this line first. So we are going to cut eight and a quarter, just clear down the middle. All right, that is gonna be easy enough. Eight and a quarter, clear down the middle. Where's my eight? Seven, eight, eight and a quarter right there. All right, is that right? Eight and a quarter, okay. I'm gonna cut it clear down. Or up. <laughs> okay, good. All right, we've got that. Now, is there anything that says cut second? Uh, no, there is not. Okay, so we can do this first here. How about, this is three and three quarter by five, three and three quarter, okay. So let's do five, because that's that would be this way, five. Where's the five? Right here. Okay, five. Two. They're all going to be three and three quarter because that's this is three and three quarters wide. So we're going to go two next. Okay. And now this one should be, oh, look how perfect. Look how perfect it came out. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I love when that happens. It's so wonderful. Okay. What do we have going on over here? We have... The eight and a quarter, let's turn it this way and do eight and a quarter again. Seven, eight and a quarter. Okay. Eight and a quarter. Now we should have this left that's just fine. Yes. Three and three quarter by three and three quarter. Well, you couldn't get much easier than that. We're just going to make squares. So what do we have here? This is three and a half and three and three quarter. And let's just do that one time and then another time. Three and a half and three and three quarter. Oh, perfect. Look, it got little berries right there. That's great. All righty. And then this will be our envelope. That's going to be Cool, either way. I want it to be so that the big flap goes like this with this wreath there. That would be cool. Alrighty. Carefully we'll move this out of the way and then we'll do the last one. Okay. How's everybody doing? Good? Oh, this one's going to be easy peasy. All right, now. Here's what we're gonna have to think about, especially if you chose a paper that has stripes, okay? What you wanna think about is um, which way you want the stripes to go. If you're gonna use the stripe side, I might. But um, panel for an A2 card or tag. Keep print cut title, die cut, or punch embellishments, or fussy cut. Or I could use these two strips, I'm not sure. Oh, that's what I did on that one. Yeah, that's what I did on that one. The strips I put like going horizontally across the thing. So if I put strips going horizontally across the thing, I wouldn't want horizontal, like I wouldn't want them this way. I wouldn't want to cut them this way. I'd want to cut them this way if I choose to do that. Yeah. And if I choose to keep the title or die cut, I could cut this guy out or keep it or something, or just keep it as a whole unit like that. Yeah, so I need to cut it this way. Okay, that was just a little bit of a um, little self-talk. Yeah, to, uh, do what you need to do, talk yourself through it, you know? Okay, we'll save that. All right, is there something we're cutting first? I don't think I wrote cut first, but I know that I'm gonna wanna cut this guy first. I should have done that yeah. for the envelope. So eight and a quarter, let's do that first. We did that first on the other one. Okay, where's my eight? Eight and a quarter, all righty.
make sure it fits. There's eight and a quarter. There's this. One and seven eighths by 12. What a weird measurement. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to fold this in half. I don't have eighths on my thing. And I know what I was trying to do is just get a half. All right, so I'm just going to go like this and get a half. I remember doing this when I made the template. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'll do. And then I'll cut it that way. Because I don't have eighths on this paper trimmer. If you do, more power to you. But I, I don't have eighths. So with that in mind, I will just fold it in half. There we go. How did I do the measurement? Well, I just did it. There we go. Is this more than 12 by 12? Huh. Oh no, I guess not. All right, good. So now that's good right there. And now let's do eight and a quarter this way. Okay. Eight and a quarter this way. Like that. See how it matches up with the pattern. I can make sure I got it right. This will match up with the pattern this way. So I've got to do, let's see, it's all three and three quarters here. So it's five this way, five this way. Okay, all right, five. Where's my five? Right there, is that right? Yep, it sure is. Okay, five, and then we've got that. And that's it, we are done cutting. That is how you do tackle your sack. Now, you have a lot of freedom within how you're going to put these pieces, okay? You have a lot of freedom. You certainly don't have to follow my lead, um, but I'm here to give you some guidance. Okay, so. let's do the uh, scrapbook layout that has the three tags on it, okay? Let's do that one. So I am going to, I chose this for my base, okay, for the base of my layout, and... I am going to go through and all the ones that we cut that had tags. Now this one, I liked it so much. I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna save this guy. I was gonna use it as a tag because I think that would just look cute as pie. Well, uh, oh, it looks so good. Oh, I can't help myself, I've got to. I was gonna use it on a card because look, look how good it would look on a card. Uh, man, looks so good. No, I'm gonna, I, uh, no, I changed my mind. I'm gonna use it as a tag because it looks so good as a tag. All right, we'll save the card for another time. This could be a tag as well. Maybe like that, or maybe just the plane. That might, and I think I'm gonna turn my tags the other way. I think I'm gonna have them going up and down instead of side to side like the other ones. I don't think this has any more tags on it. Where's the, uh, this one had a tag on it. Where's this one? This one with the stripe. Where's my striped one? Oh, that one that I just took from, I should give you a letter. That was L that I took these two from. This one is J. Um, should I take this from J? Maybe, that looks kind of good. Maybe like that. Oh, no, 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 not that. Not that, maybe turn it the right side. Maybe J. Let me see how I I remember doing that Santa one and I kind of wanted to see what that would look like. This was from from I. Let me see what it would look like from I. That might not be that. Uh, but the, no, I think no, I don't think I want to do that. Maybe I could use a piece. The green, maybe. I kind of liked that other one. All right, I'll go ahead and use it from, uh, where did I just have that from? The stripes, here, yeah. Did I have it right side up? Yeah, we'll do that. That looks fine, okay? So we're using, this is from the, the, the two outside ones. These are from L. This one is from J. Okay, so these two from L, this one from J. 
where am I getting this idea? It, I purposely didn't create like a guide for this part of the series because I want you to have the freedom to do what you want beyond the video. If I just lock you into a layout, then, then you're just stuck. But, um, so that's why I didn't create a little thing. All right, and what else? Let's pull the, um, which is the piece that has the one, the, the one by six and a half? The one by six and a half. Oh, this is from K. All right, this is from K. This is from K. The one by six and a half piece that was right here. Let's pull this guy out, okay? And six and a half by eight and a half. We didn't cut this in half. Huh, no wonder I was struggling. No wonder, I forgot to cut a piece. Six and a half by three and a half. All right, well, let's cut that three and a half. Well, no wonder I was, I was like, what am I gonna do here? No wonder, okay. That looks crooked, why? It looks crooked. Three and a half, six and a half, there we go. Okay, that is a little bit better. Now we have a six and a half by eight and a half piece. Keep big and use as a mat for two photos, sized four by six. That's exactly what I want to do. Okay, just like that. And then we've got a, ooh, is this both sides like this? That's fine. Yeah. Put this like this. Hmm. We could put two pictures like this, and then in our three tags. I wonder if we should have the three tags. I like the three tags on the top. Should we have this coming from the bottom? I wonder if we can have another piece. Maybe we'll cut this in half and go like that, maybe. Maybe we'll just do it like that because that's the same piece right there. I don't know. But I definitely like the three tags idea, okay? So let's cut it into tags. And guess what? If we don't want to use this, we don't have to. So here's what I do to cut tags, okay? I fold it in half without creasing this. And then I snip off the corners with no rhyme or reason and I unfold it and there's the tag, okay? And now I hold this one against it. And now I make them all the same. And that's just the way I make tags. Um, it's quick and easy and um, I've got them all the same. Oops, I'm gonna need this guy here. Okay. Yep, just like this. Now I use these corners. I'm so glad I used a striped one. Cause look, now I can use these corners. See how it looks like it needs something? Let me notch this right here, as a matter of fact. Since we've got that, uh, let's see, which way were we gonna knife this? Well, let's fishtail it, how about, well, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Let me just hold on a second before I get too ahead of myself. Do I have other corners? No, I don't, just the one, okay. But look, see, that just gives it a little oomph right down there like that. That is just fine. We could even go like that if we want. Super. Looks well, kind of good already. And the cool thing is, is that we could put, ooh. Give me a green right here. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, that's fine. We'll glue that down. That'll be a cute little layout. I'm not a fan of this though. I don't really uh, like the way this looks. So you know what I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna improvise here. I am gonna create some, and you know why? Because this square looks like it's floating. Now, 
instead of having like me just think, oh, I don't want to use this on this layout. You know what I'm going to do is I am going to use it on the layout. I absolutely am. But um, I'm going to maybe do something that goes this way. And maybe draw, what, what can I do here to draw my eye this way? This and this. All right. Let's just fold it in half. Okay. Cut it. Take these. Um, which side? This side. Okay. Let's just cut right like this and right like this. Since we've got this little corner theme going, and let's go like this and like this. There we go. Let's do that. That's much better. That looks a little bit more like it belongs. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I like the little corner ideas there. Um, it's cute, nice little Christmas layout. Cause then when we add pictures and embellishments and things, we've got a focal point with the skate. We've got some balance here. Uh, we definitely need some embellishments here. I'm imagining flowers down here, um, but that'll be real good. So I think I'm actually gonna stick this down, except that I want to be mindful that if I'm gonna put like a brad or a ribbon or something on the tags, then I might want to hold off on sticking them down uh, just yet. Or maybe I'll put embellishments on them first. Okay, good. So we've got a layout uh, all done. Very nice. Okay, um, let's continue. This is, I glued everything down on our first layout here. And of course, it may not look like much right now. Uh, or kind of looks a little strange. We don't have a title in here yet. We don't have any journaling. We certainly don't have any photos, but uh, just keep in mind that your two four by six photos can fit just like that down here. And then you can fit, uh, let's see what we've got here. You could decide to put photos here, photos here, okay? If you wanted to cover up that skate or if you, you may not be using this paper, so you could essentially fit five photos. Wouldn't that look good? Yeah, real good. You could put your title, where would you put your title with all these photos here? Well, you could put it along this side, have it going up and down sideways. You could use, instead of putting a photo or something, you could have a title going across a tag, um, something like that. Okay, and just a few more embellishments. Like I said, I'm picturing some flowers or something, something Christmassy down here. And, uh, and that should finish that off, so good. All right, let's move on to the next layout. Uh, we'll keep it moving. So I think I'm going to use this as my base for my next layout. And let's make the one that has uh, the three, let me get you the sample here that I used with the other one. Yeah, this one, let's, let's do this one. Uh, the one that's got the three uh, photos across from it. Let's see, I suppose I could show you how to do this. This, it's not that. If we have, I'll tell you what, if we have extra paper left over where we're not using it, we'll do that in the corner. All right, so we're going to use, um, let's see, we're going to use L. Let's, let's get L. Where is L? Okay. This is what we have left from L. And they have two uh, squares right here, the three and three quarter uh, squares. And uh, I don't know how to read music, so I'm sure that people are laughing at me right now as I'm turning this every which way. <laughs> That's probably right. Oh, but the bow is upside down, see? I kind of wanted the bow like that here. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, we'll go like that. And let's get K. 
Let's do the this square right here that's a mat for a four by four size photo and we'll put this uh, right in the center. Okay, real simple there. We could do it like this if we wanted. I really like that wreath though. It's funny though because I know that that's the nose of the deer. <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, we'll do it like that. I just like the bow. I like the way the bow looks. Okay. Yeah, just like that. And then let's use the, um, let's see. Oh, yeah, let's use the this from the same, from K. Keep print or cut title. And let's use this to cut the title out. And we can put the title right here at the top or underneath. We could go like this. And that would look good. You put Christmas here. Okay. And, uh. Let's see, what else do we have? Let's use some two by two squares. We've got two of them here. I, I should have enough in other patterns. Do I have some in other patterns? I thought I did. Oh yeah, I did. We've got some in uh, I, two by two squares. Yeah, I like the dark with the music notes. Oh good, that's good with the music notes then. This is good. It kind of goes along with that Christmas music, uh, Christmas music theme there. Let's turn them the other way though, for heaven's sake. Is that a good idea? I don't know. Maybe not, huh? Maybe we should use. Oh, there, the apple. That looks. That looks pretty good. We go like that. Yeah, maybe we should just keep them straight, huh? Decorate. What's on the other side? No, we'll just use this. But we'll outline them in white. That's what we'll do. Okay, good. Yeah, good. That's pretty that's pretty much it for this one. Okay, let's get this out of the way here. Alrighty. Yeah, good. Now, did you hear me say I'm gonna outline these in white? Now I wonder if this has a white core. I think it does. We'll see in just a second. Yep paper has a white core so sometimes just scraping off the edge of the paper at least this paper has a white core give yours a try you can just gently scrape the side or you can use sandpaper and then that makes a whole like a world of difference right there okay if you do it for one you should do it for all um or at least you know the same ones in a row so they look like you meant to do that yeah that looks good we'll do it to this one too you won't notice it as well but you'll notice if it's not done if that makes sense and just be gentle I've ripped many a paper being real heavy-handed see how that's just a little too yeah okay there. I yeah I like that little apple there that little vintage apple maybe we'll do these Closer together. One, two, three, one, two, three, six, seven. Yeah, that's good. That's good there. Okay, cool. You know, if I was a smart person, I would also do that up here to these. I think I will. And let's see what I'm going to use to cut out this Christmas. Now, I could use, um, if I have like a rectangle die, do I have a good die that I could use? Maybe. I don't know. I kind of want something a little bit more festive. It's maybe something like this. Would this fit? Mm, I don't want to be too big. Mm. I wish I had... Um... Oh, you know what? I wonder if I have a sun line. Like a sun, a sun dye somewhere. What do I do here in these? Oh no, that's too skinny. Let me look at my dies and see see if I, I I might have a good die to cut that out. If not, I'll just cut out the word. But that's not really I'm not really trying to just cut out the word. So let me, let me see what I have here. But yeah, that's the general gist of the idea for this layout. Um, I'm gonna finish this off here. Um, I don't know if you noticed I added some brads to the other ones. So I'm not going to fully embellish, but I am going to get this just ready and good uh, before we move on to the next one.
All right, let me show you how this looks when I put it together. Now it's not fully embellished, but I did give it a start uh, with a ribbon and I did find a die that I liked and um, put some little metal, metal embellishments right here. Now what I did to make this look a little bit better in terms of the visual, and maybe you could try this too, because when you put three and three and then a thing in the middle, you might be thinking it needs something else or why does it, it looks bare, depending on the paper you chose. But if you move everything a little bit closer together, then, okay, what I'm thinking is I'll put a picture here. Where's my, um, let me give you a better idea here, okay? <clears throat> so I'll put a picture here like this. Now I can put journaling here. I could put more pictures because I think these will fit Oh no, they won't, they'll, they'll fit three by threes. Okay, smaller pictures there if I want. I could put uh, little um, flowers. I have extras, just extras and, and embellishments from the collection, or if you have st stickers, tags, buttons, brads, whatever. You also have room up top, where if you have small, um, like you have a little bit of freedom up there, you could put, um, you could tie a ribbon around it, you could add, you'll be surprised because remember these strips, we've got these, le let me find them here. You know, we've got these left over on purpose. We're not using them quite yet. So if you feel like you just really need something, you could put that guy up top there. That looks great just as it is. I might even just go ahead and do that. I mean, that just kind of pulls it all together. So that's why I save all these strips for the end. You just never know when you're gonna need just that one more thing on a card or a layout or whatever. But that is, uh, oh, and I'm also saving this. Uh, this was from uh, the die, because I don't know if I'm gonna need just a little bit more of something. You just never know, we'll save that uh, towards the end. But other than that, that's good enough for now, and I'm ready to move that to the side. And, oh, and by the way, just you'll see that this is like raised up a little bit, this part. I just used some cardboard, some scrap cardboard that I had. Cardboard for real, like, the back of a cereal box or something. All right, last layout. And I think I'm gonna use this paper for my layout, my last one. So let's grab this, uh, let's see here. Let's take from, from I, from, from our I template, we have this seven by 12 um, piece. Look at that. Looks good, okay. And let's take from the K piece, um, let's take this, this is the mat for the five by five photo. And we've got, oops, sorry about that. We've got this in a, a, like let's put this in one of the quadrants. Quadrant meaning if you like imagine that it's divided into four quadrants. So let's put this, let's put this right here for now, okay, oops. And then let's take from, let's take from J. Let's take these side pieces. This is the keep print, cut, title, die cut, or punch or embellishments or fussy cut. Basically, you've got two strips that, or depending on your paper, you could have kept it all together as one strip. It just depends on what paper you chose. I cut mine into two and... I think what I wanna do is, uh, there's a real subtle writing, I don't, a script on this paper. And I think I want, I'm gonna make sure that's right side up. I'm gonna put it down here on the bottom. I think that looks good. And then for this one, looks real good up here. That's nice. You know, I might even move that quadrant over there. That is great. Looks really nice. It's about done. Look at that. I didn't even cut anything. Super. With just a few flowers up here to bring out that red. Yeah. Good. So I'll mount that down and uh, then we'll move on to our cards. We'll save our envelopes for last, okay? Um, but yeah, let me mount this down real quick. 
All right, this is all glued down. Uh, again, not not real complicated and uh, not it doesn't really look that done, but it's done enough. I, I feel like I could put that into like a page protector or something, add my photo right there. That's for a 555. Five, five. Let me see if I have a little a little guide. Do I? No, I don't. Oh wait, maybe I do. No, I don't. But um, for a, you can have up to a five by five photo right here. You could do a four by four photo. You could double mount it. Um, definitely room for embellishments, titles, tags, memorabilia, ephemera, uh, lots of things, journaling. Um, but we've got a little page uh, start right there. So that's good. So our layouts are basically done. Let's move on to the cards. Uh, we've got our two card bases. We've got a lot of uh, paper left over. So let me pull out. Um, this is our template I, remember? And we've got this one and we've got this one. And these are our panels. That's Christmas one I specifically saved for a card. And I'm very glad I did. I wonder, you probably can't see that very well. Let me see here if you can see this a little bit better. I go like this, probably. Okay. And then um, this one, you know, we'll see. I kind of like the music and the Christmas on this one. And uh, let's just leave that go there. And then let's pull, this is our, what we have left for our L piece, okay? And we've got a three, this tiny little three quarter by three and three quarter. And let's put, as a matter of fact, let's turn this guy this way and, and put this right here like that across. That's a great card. Right there, a nice Christmas card. Okay. And then on K, we've got uh, a little two by two square and a little guy right here. And let's put this, this little guy up here. Definitely we can, we'll fishtail that and ink it for sure. And let's see, for here, we've got one more piece here aside from the envelope piece on J. So let's take this. We're just gonna add just a little bit of interest. Maybe we wanna add it behind here. That looks phenomenal, like that. Now, it depends. Honestly, you could put it right on top of here. But because of the paper I chose, I don't like that look. Depending on your paper, maybe you wanna just put it right on top. Ooh, and I think I want more of the, more of the red like that. That looks good. It looks a little American flag-ish, but um, that's okay. Yeah, I like that. I don't know, I like that. That looks good. I could do it the other way, actually. Could I put it by the Christmas? I could. Uh, I don't like that as much. I could do it this way. You almost just can't see that though. How about like that? No, I'll do it the way I had it. Yeah, that's fine. Now you you might be thinking, why would I waste all that paper? But like I, like by putting it behind, I don't know. It like I said, it just depends on what you chose. Maybe that paper is going to go on top. So, you know, it just depends on on your paper. Yeah, that looks really good. Now. Um, we're going to need to offset this a little bit just because it would be certainly different if I put a white card base. I, you know, I guess I could choose a white card base if I wanted to. No, I'll stick with the green. I'll stick with the green. Maybe I'll just add some white paint along the sides. That's maybe what I'll do. Okay, let me show you what I mean quick. This is something I do pretty often. Um, okay, just so I don't feel like cleaning up my table. Um, this is just basic white paint, 50 cent acrylic white paint from whatever, wherever store you get your, just any store basically that, and I just take my finger and run it along the side. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I do a little bit of paint spatter. That's nice. I try to, 
like I'm not trying to get some on the inside, but I definitely don't feel like I ruin it if I get it on the inside. Because now see what that'll do, it'll create a nice little, sort of like a distressed little edge border. And acrylic paint dries pretty quick. So unlike inks and stuff, like I don't have to wait for it to dry too long. I might not do this on like a scrapbook page. Um, only because I don't always feel like waiting for it to dry. And also, like, depending on your photos, it might not be kind of good for your photos. So, yeah, we'll just do that. That, that'll that be just fine. Even though this has a white core, I just don't, I don't feel like doing that another time. Should I do it on this? Sure. Why not? Just a little bit. See, it's dry on my fingers already. And then it just wipes up with a baby wipe. I can get to my baby wipes without pulling out the whole package. Yeah. Yeah, it just comes off. And then I don't have to move everything. I can just clean the block. Yep. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. I've been saying that a lot, but I just can't believe how easy it is. So I will adhere all of these things down just as such. Uh, you can use a wet glue. Today I'm using score tape. And this doesn't take me long at all. And then we'll move into the um, the envelopes, okay? And you know, there are, I, I did see it, and of course I know you've been seeing, there are pieces left on the template guides, some that even say layout, and we haven't put them yet on layouts. Well, you can do that if you want to. You can leave them off um, or... You can leave them, I like to leave them kind of to the end sometimes, you know. How would you know which ones to start with? I don't know. I just kind of start with bigger ones maybe. Um, it's up to you. This is just the way I did it this time. So, but they're your, they're your template guides. So you can do any combination of, of anything just a good way to use use your stash. Okay, and now for this here, let me just go and let me see if I can just snip a little triangle right there like we did before. That looks kind of good. You know, though, I'm imagining that I have a cut apart, so maybe I'll wait to adhere that. Do I have a paper clip? I don't. Don't I have a paper clip? Well, I'll just go like this. Because maybe if I have a um, cut apart, then I could put the cut apart down and then that little strip over top. This one I know is going to be just fine the way it is. So I'll put the, this down here. And snip this. I can't pick it up. <laughs> snip it just like this. Same way. I don't think I'm gonna save these triangles. Yeah, and I'll put this down and then I could put this guy right on top. Oh, but you know what? I was gonna ink that. Yeah, let's ink that. This is just regular distress ink. That's what I wanted to do. Much better. Do I want it clear at the top? Yes, I do. I'll leave that out because I might ink the edges of both of all the cards, actually. Yeah, that'll be good. Okay, let's move on to the envelope portion. Um, this is probably the trickiest part of this set of templates. So let's look at first, I'm pulling, I zoomed in a little bit and I pulled out the L template. We've got two pieces left, this one um, for a layout, which uh, we'll deal with later. And then I've got this one and I chose this one because I've got kind of a light colored paper here. So let me move this little piece uh, off to the side just so we don't get confused. And 
Here's what I'm gonna say about the envelope template part here. First of all, like I said, if you have the envelope punch board, which um, here is my, here's my envelope punch board and I will show you um, on the other, the other one piece like this, how to use it like that. It's pre-cut. If you already have a punch board, you already know. Um, but if not, here's what I'm gonna suggest is that you take a, a piece of scrap paper and make you a little envelope uh, template from here, just like this, and then you'll have it and you can, um, can go from there. Um, now, once you have, this is, once you make these notches, you, or you measure in, you measure in and you draw a little triangle. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You just draw a little triangle. Then what you can do to make your little, uh, cheat sheet here, um, some people might call it a jig is, uh, you cut out this and score it and then you can put it on your piece. So you've almost got like a template within a template and you can do it that way. You can draw triangles like this. Okay. And do it like that. Or that, and this is, that's a good method. And that's what I do too. Or what you can do is take a ruler and on your template, you can make, um, some dotted lines that you'll know that are for folding, okay? So that then when you've got it like this, what you can do is actually fold kind of to the line and then you can go back and score that later. Like you can, I can go over to my scoreboard now and, and score, or I can even, I don't really even need a scoreboard, do I? I could just go like that, right? I find this to be a little easier uh, than making a whole big uh, sample thing. Um, even though I said that's what I usually do, sometimes I just do things the long way. Why? Why do I do it? I don't know. You put it back on there, you fold it till you see the dotted line, right? like this, okay. Now I'm doing two steps at once. You can see I'm uh, drawing and folding at once here like this. Why don't I just do this? Now, our A2 card, wherever that just went, should fit right inside that dotted line, which it does. And that's how you can check. Okay, so this is how I started it. Fold till I see the dotted line. Um, fold up to here till I see the dotted line. Okay. Yeah, this is probably going to be your, your easiest method. And then fold up here till you see the uh, dotted line. If you don't get those first measurements, though, you know, those initial measurements here on the template, these, um, you're going to be hating life. So I just, I really, really recommend that you um, spend the extra time. Like I said, once you do it, you're going to always have it. But then you can go through and you can score it real good, right? Like this. Okay. And then what you do is you see these little tiny corners that have formed. We're just going to cut those out. didn't do this. Why is this a baby corner? Not too sure why it's a baby corner. Okay. 
Okay, and then there's your envelope. Oh, I cut my paper crooked. I cut my paper crooked. And there's your envelope right like that. Okay, and then you just put adhesive right along the side and you've got your, your envelope. But I wanted that skate to be on the top or that wreath. Oh well, it didn't work out that way. That's okay. But it, you'll notice, even though my paper, I cut my paper crooked, it still fits my card. And no one will ever know. It looks a little wonky in the front, but that's okay. All right. So let me show you on the other one before I adhere it down, the difference. Okay, if you can get this, if you can get yourself an envelope punch board, you're really gonna be happy. This one, let's see, where's an A2? Three and a quarter. And you just go like this. It even comes with a little thing, okay? And you go to, you put your paper at three, wait a second, let me do it right here. A2, three and three quarter three and three quarter right there and you can you see that and then you put it up against the the correct notch based on this little chart that they have and then you uh, punch it and you score it right down it gives you the line and then you just turn it and line up the line with the little guide and you don't have to look at the measurement anymore you just look at the line see the line I just scored I line up I could see the line. I, have to, <laughs> I can't see the line very well with my paper. There we go. Okay. And it cuts that out for you. But I also like this because it comes with this thing. Uh, rounds the edges. I'm not trying to endorse this envelope punch board. It's just it's pretty common uh, to have it in your in your craft area. I know a lot of people have it. I love mine so much, and um, it really made my life easy. I'm gonna still use this wonky envelope, even though it turned out a little weird. But maybe I'll turn it the other way. So you can see it on the outside. I actually think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn it this way because I like that bell with the wreath. That looks pretty. And then have the music notes on the inside. That's what I'll do. Yeah, that's pretty. Looks good. So now you just fold it in and uh, that takes a lot of the guesswork out of your, out of your envelope making. And where's that card I just had? See. And it fits it right in there. Okay. Seriously, it it's really good and it comes, uh, you can do all kinds of different sizes and stuff. And I believe they have a, even one that you can get. Well, they have centimeter measurements and then they have a chart that's done in inches. And then they also have like um, a piece of paper that comes with it that has it done in centimeters. So yeah, it's a good, it's a good investment. So that is it. That's the uh, the envelopes part here. I'm gonna seal these up with tape and then uh, we'll finish out the rest of the uh, leftover pieces, okay? All right, we're almost done. So we have a few little pieces left over and I'm just pulling them off of, li we literally have four pieces left over, okay? Um, one which is from the layout piece of I, then I've got this little one, um, and then uh, a two by two square, and then this other one. So there's, I don't really have any real directions, um, basically for any of it, but you know, think about what you've already got, um, in the collection. Think about what kind of paper you have. I mean, it just so happened that this turned out to be kind of a one layer card. Um, this one's in the works here. Maybe you didn't have a nice print on one side that you, you know, so maybe you're going to uh, add some of these pieces to this card. Really, that's sort of, even though it said layout, maybe it's not for your layout. Maybe you have, a, you know, a Cricut or some letter dies and you want to, you know, um, do a title out of this piece. 
you know, on one of the sides that say like Noel or Joy or um, Mary, uh, something like that. I mean, just kind of look and see where you want to fill in some holes. And um, don't forget about these strips as well that you cut off um, of the bottoms of your papers if they have if you have them on the bottoms of your papers. And then any extras. Now this collection. I already knew that I was going to use this collection, and it comes with, comes with, um, there's a lot of little extras to cut, and decorative cards, and, you know, uh, things like that, that I can use to make just an instant card, and I already knew that, so, like, I knew that I could add this right there, or, um, or add this right there to it, and make it into an instant card, because I knew that I had these other, um, decorative elements in the collection. But it just depends on what you have in in your, you know, stash, what paper you're using. That looks good. You know, look at all these cute little snowflakes that I could use. Um, there's flowers. There's uh, just all kinds of things that, uh, that I plan to use to finish off these projects. So if you end up with some pieces left over, left over in your tackle, your stack, just fill in the blanks. And don't forget about the insides of the cards too. Maybe everything looks full and you really don't want to force it. Um, maybe you want to open the card up and uh, put like a nice, just a little, just like a little, like a notched thing like this inside, you know, or coming out of a side like that. Or, you know, maybe just something like that. A nice on the top. That might look nice. You know, so there's all kinds of things. Maybe you have punches. Um, you know, circles or stars. Or, you know, snowflake borders. That kind of thing. Wouldn't it be cool to just go through and do some punching, you know, of these little extra pieces. And just add a few elements. This is just a little tip that I just thought of. One of my favorite things to do when I need to add a little something and I don't know what to add is I take, I did not plan to talk about this, but like I'll take a little tiny circle punch and I'll punch out of something. It doesn't even matter what, like some of these music notes, let's say. And I would just punch, like just say it like that, like just a music note out of it. And then I have this little tiny circle and then I take some glossy accents and I just do a little bit of glossy accents on top of a circle and just make a shiny circle. And it's just such a cute little addition. Um, and it's a really inexpensive embellishment. Once you buy glossy accents, it lasts a really long time. So that's one of my favorite things to do with like leftover paper. Um, so I wanted to leave you a little bit of freedom in that. And uh, I think I'm going to finish off these pages and cards. And then I'll come back and show you the the final result. Um, I really hope that you're enjoying this so far. And um, stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll give you the hashtags too to share. Okay, let's take a final look at all of the projects. And I've got them all finished. Um, I Well, I've got them all finished, but I haven't added the photos or maybe some absolute final touches yet because I'm giving myself a little bit of wiggle room. Okay. But I will show you how I finished them off. Uh, 95% done, 99% done. So here is the card and I just love the way that looks. Here is, uh, it's one of the cut aparts from the decorative cards that coordinates with the collection. And I did put the little piece, one of the leftover pieces just inside the card. I thought that was real nice with the music notes. Now what I'll probably do this is the part that I'll finish up is put like a stamp, like a stamped image in here or a sentiment, I mean, and then, um, yeah, put it in the envelope. And I always use a little piece of uh, a double-sided tape, but I leave the uh, backing paper on until I'm ready to seal it shut. So that's the first card and envelope. And the second one, um, what I did was I turned this little piece here, um, one of the leftover pieces we were talking about, I turned that into a notch and uh, put that here a little decorative element here and a little decorative element here. And inside I did go ahead and put that piece in there. I thought that looked really good. And uh, like I said on the other card, I will put a stamped uh, sentiment there and uh, 
Uh, that's that card there too. It looks great. Now for my, uh, this is my layout with the tags. Look how good that looks. I love it. I love it so much. The only thing that I did different uh, since we looked at it before was I added, this is a little chipboard uh, word that says gift and um, a few flowers and leaves. But everything else was just the way we had it. So yeah, it looks excellent. And then, let's see, let me move that over here. Then here, this one. Oh boy, I love it. Uh, I added some snowflakes, which were uh, coordinating like extras that you could cut uh, with the collection. And a few of the little cut pieces, cut apart pieces from the junk journal set that coordinates with it. Um, also, let me bring it a little closer so you can see the metal, just metal embellishments. Now, I want you to look under the snowflake. You might not even be able to see it, but I added, remember we had a two by two square that was left over? There it is right there. There's a two by two square left over. This is just an embellishment that was in, you know, that no different from the snowflakes. But what I did was I added this little piece that um, you could use to put like a photo on the back or a photo right here and then slide it in. And um, it was just some like uh, stickers, embellishments, that kind of thing. And um, yeah, and then our, our four by four, space for our four by four photo there. This one doesn't have a title yet. So that's why I'm saying that's the part that's unfinished yet besides the photos is I could put the title down here if I wanted or up here if I wanted. Um, but we'll just leave that till I get the pictures down and then we'll see how we wanna do it like that. And then finally, this one, and uh, we've already seen most of it. The thing that I added here was I really went to town on these flowers. Let me bring it up closer so you can see. Don't they look great? These little poinsettia flowers and the bell and the bow. Yeah, it looks really good up there. And I didn't wanna overdo it because I'm trying to keep in mind that I'm gonna have a photo here, possibly more photos here, but I did on the bottom add um, a little uh, little reindeer embellishments. And actually part of my motivation for doing that was this little nose right here. Because when I cut it, I thought, oh, well, it's gonna look kind of weird if I don't act like it was meant to be that way, you know? So, yeah, and I added a little bit of white paint around the outside edges. Even though I may have mentioned earlier that I don't often do that on scrapbook pages, that's actually not what I meant. I meant that I often do it on scrapbook pages. It's just that I was trying to be mindful that if you're making like a vintage album or something where you're trying to really protect your pictures, you may not want to put it on your scrapbook page. But, um, yeah, I do that quite often, actually. So. so, yeah, that's it. So we've got our three layouts and our two cards and um, really hope that you've had a good time today. Let me zoom out just a little bit. There you can see my workspace, part of my workspace there. <laughs> but I um, hope you've enjoyed uh, your time today on Tackle Your Stack. And definitely check out the other templates that are available. So head over to sandpaperroad.com and just click on Tackle Your Stack. You will see... Um, all of the templates that are available so far, and I'm working to go in order all the way through the alphabet. It is a bit of a process, so I'm so sorry. It's a little slow going. Um, there's just a lot to do when it comes to putting them together. There's also project ideas um, for each set of templates that we are doing that has a video that goes with it. So like if you go over there, you'll see, you'll also see close up photos of these other ones that we did, those these 4th of July ones and um, these lavender ones that we did all with this series of this I, J, K, and L set of templates. And I'd love to see what you make. So uh, please feel free to share, share on your social media what you have made. And when you write a post and share a picture, right along with the post, just type in hashtag Sandpaper Road, hashtag Tackle Your Stack, and hashtag Sandpaper Road Creates, and that way I'll make sure to see them. Even if you only include one of them, they're all tied to Sandpaper Road, so I will make sure to be seeing them. So uh, thanks so much for watching, 
and um, check out the other. I will put uh, cards right here on the screen so that you can see the other Tackle Your Stack uh, series videos thus far. You can check out the whole playlist. Um, thank you so much for subscribing to Sandpaper Road on YouTube. It is free to subscribe and um, it's just a really good time. Lots of uh, free tutorials and great ideas to share. So can't wait to see you in the next video and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.